in it. Good girl. Good girl. So we're doing a bit of grooming today, as you can see. How much I've got off already. This is a Labrador and I'm using a Ferminator. And when you've brushed, you press this button and the fur comes off. So I like to give the dogs a choice when I'm doing something as invasive as grooming. So here we have the mat, and if she lies on the mat, she can have a bone. It's a rawhide chew. And she gets off the mat, that's her choice, and that's fine. And the, but I keep the bone. So she's nice and distracted and busy. She doesn't dislike being groomed at all, but she will fidget about, which is quite normal if you've ever tried to take a child to the hairdresser. I'm sure you'd have the same problem here. This is how you push the button and the fear comes off. Ooh. Um, so it's just a distraction techni re yeah, technique, really. But um, it also gives us the level of control we want and it gives her a choice. And by giving her a choice, we make the whole thing that much more pleasurable. So I'm not restraining her. She's not tied to anything. She can go. She's choosing to stay because it's totally worth it for the rawhide chew. And she gets off the mat, the rawhide chew stays on the mat. So she's learned, yeah, totally, I'll stay on the mat, keep the rawhide chew and do the brushing. So normally she'd just be biting the brush and flitting about, which is a nightmare. She very wriggly. She tends to wiggle her whole body because she kind of enjoys it and she gets a bit tickly and itchy if she's focused on it. So if you've ever taken a child into hospital for a blood test or anything, they, last time I took my son we had four nurses, three of, three of which had the job of entertaining him and one had the job of actually doing the blood test. So if you think about invasive procedures for you, like the dentist and things, if you were paid to go to the dentist regularly, you'd probably actually go. Whereas most of the time we tend to wait until something hurts so much we can't avoid it anymore and then we go. And that's not the way to go with grooming a dog. If you leave it until it's that desperate and it has to be done, it's just a really negative procedure. So we're doing it really regularly and giving her the choice and the freedom about it. And Labradors are horrendous. They melt more than any dog in the world. This is the 10th time I've brushed this dog this week. And you can see the fur all over the place. So while she's there, we could just practice touching her paws so her nails don't need cutting. But I just want to get her used to me touching them without it being a problem. You're a good girl, aren't you? It's so. not like being groomed at all. We've not done things positively with you, have we, from day one? And she's older, so she's more uncomfortable. So she's on the mat, she understands that. So we give her the chew, and she's got to decide, is, is being on the mat having the chew and being groomed worth it? So for different dogs, you'd have to pay them different amounts to do the same thing. So Ella will happily be groomed for food because she's very foody. This dog is generally more toy obsessed. She does like food, so we'll see if she thinks it's worth it. She may well get up and leave, which is fine. So some people, if you paid them £10, would go to the dentist every month. Some people, you couldn't pay them a million pounds to go to the dentist every month. Well, she's doing pretty good with that. So no pressure at all. I'm not holding on to her. No, no restraints again. She can choose to leave. This dog is half lab, so she's also very, very hairy. Very hairy. This is the de-shedding tool. This is not, sorry, the Ferminator is a de-shedding tool. This is the matting tool. But it does get through the thicker hair very well. It's down to the undercoat. She's slightly longer haired than Ella. It's important not to hurt the dog. We want to take it all slowly and gently. I wasn't going to groom her, but <laughs> I took Ella off the mat and Molly went and stood on it, didn't you? So it's always hopeful. But if you if you start the meat may you mean to go on and make it not a bad experience. I mean, we've had to tell her to lie down. We've never restrained her, but we've had to tell her to lie down and stay while we brush her, and that's just not good, you know? She doesn't want to. It's not nice, it makes it negative. This puts a much more positive slant on it. If she wasn't happy, she wouldn't be able to eat. If you think if something's really stressing you out, you're not really thinking about food very much. You've got to deal with the threat first, so. The fact that she's eating shows she's not too stressed about it, and the fact that she's staying here shows she's not too stressed about it. 
she could get up and walk off any time she liked. And again, retouch all the pores. Be okay with that. So that if she did need them cutting, I could do it, but retouch them as a matter of course every time. You're such a good girl. You're a good girl. Right, we're 20 minutes further on. She still hasn't finished this uh, chew. We're about halfway through. And I've got loads of hair out, a ton of hair out. I have to excuse the uh, iPad in the background. So she's even letting me brush her tail, which she'd normally get very upset about. And she's completely distracted because chewing is a really good stress reliever. So it really helps to release endorphins and she's making a, the whole thing a very pleasant experience. So she's led out on her side for me a couple of times and just carried on chewing oblivious. As you can see I've got loads of hair out and you can't really get a gist of it there.